Hey, thanks for tuning in to On Top and Hot. This is Tuesday, October 25th, and I'm John Zadar. Now, at the beginning of each show, I go through a prologue. I kind of say the same thing each day. But what I'm doing, folks, is just biding time to let that news scroll by. This is the best place I could find to put it. You can kind of ignore what I'm saying here a little bit, right? And pay attention to that news. With that said, we normally look at OTC and penny stocks on this show. I like to find stocks that have potential, stocks that can make us some money. Now we are looking at OTC stocks, you know what they are, and penny stocks. Yeah, there are a lot of penny stocks on the OTC market, but a penny stock can be on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, because the literal definition is any stock under five bucks. What market it's on doesn't make any difference. So any stock under $5 we could be looking at. Now most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. That's where all that news came from. That's news I've looked at over the last eight days, I guess. And it's good news, it's prime news. Not that there's anything wrong with financials and public offerings, but these are mergers, acquisitions, joint ventures, expansions, uplistings, things like that, the catalyst. So I've already looked at it. I've put it there for you. So if you got a pop, it's me to, is that getting old yet? If you gotta pause me to look at it, folks, do it. Honestly, there's a lot of great information in there. Now, because we do look at a lot of OTC stocks, I hate to waste my time. I start here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is the only site I am aware of on the entire internet where every single OTC stock is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. This is the information we're most interested in. They have the news here. They have the share structure, the financials, the filings. Why go running around the internet looking for this stuff when right here is where they're nesting it all? It'll save you a lot of time, folks. And from what I hear, hmm, time is more valuable than money. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm gonna refresh this and hope these numbers jump. This does not refresh automatically. You could be on this page a hundred times like me and it doesn't move, but I pretty much refresh it a lot. Not a good finish for the day, not at all. Dollar volume looks like we've come up a little bit. We were at about 1.6 billion, we're at 1.9, not even getting close to our old average of 2.1 billion. Share volume is really pathetic, folks. We're hoping for 10 billion double digits. The market seems to do a lot better with at least that, and that is the least. This is half of the least. We are really hurting right now, folks, with 5.4 billion. And our trades, you hear me say it every day, you can probably say it with me, 250,000 to 300,000 trades is where we've been stuck for the longest time and we're still stuck there. So no, there isn't a whole lot of change on our market. It is stifling, it is getting slower, but thank goodness traders like to trade. Catalysts are always being thrown out there and there are stocks moving. Matter of fact, I got a bunch of them I wanna share with you. I'm not even sure which ones I'm gonna zoom in on yet. Um, in the meantime, while I mull that over, I do wanna share something with you. Something came to me today. This could be a very hot potential list that could explode for you at any time and it's a real easy thing to do. Come over here to corporate actions. No, yeah, corporate actions, it's right. <laughs> See symbol changes here? What we're looking for is not on the page. You gotta go get it again. Hit this little arrow here. Come down to tier change right there. Now we've got tier changes. This is a list of any stock on the entire OTC market that moved in its tier, whether it be from pink limited to pink or pink up to the QB or from pink limited down to expert. Wherever they move, they list them here. And normally there's no more than say 20 a day, roughly. There could be more, could be less, but that's what you got. And we've done a, a video on this, how you can make a lot of money off of this list. Because normally when a stock comes off the expert market, which is where it's dead in the water, uh, you can't buy their shares, can't sell their shares. And if you're invested in it, you're in limbo until they come back on the market. And they do that by getting their filings caught up. Or coming from the gray market, just as bad as the expert. Can't do anything with it hardly down there. So when they come back on the market, there is a lot of excitement. And you can see hundreds of percent gains thousands of percent gains, and I'm not lying when I say tens of thousands of percent gains. 
Just about uh, six months ago, saw one that came off the expert market to Pink Limited, just like this one. Caught it that day, but I didn't get into it fast enough. It went 37,000% break that down for you every hundred dollar bill you would have invested would have made you thirty seven thousand dollars even have a video out there of one that went eighty nine thousand percent now no that's not normal but a couple thousand percent yeah that's normal so you put down a hundred dollars and that's the sort of thing you invest on these you don't put your mortgage on it just put a hundred dollar bill two hundred dollars and let the thing go well here's what I noticed today I'm constantly following this list each day and I am looking for the ones that are coming off the gray in the expert market, going to pink, limited, pink. Those are the ones that run, not all of them, but it's a short list that I can put on a list and watch. And if anything pops, I was there, I was ready and I can get into it in a timely manner. Well, a lot of these stocks that moved from expert and gray up to the pink limited still are not on the market. They have permission, they're qualified. I don't know why they're not trading yet, but they're not trading yet. But there's nothing holding them back as far as I can see. So it's like any moment they could come back. So what I have done is created a list of these stocks that aren't on the market yet, but when they come on, there could be a huge surge for any one of them. And it's a very easy list. Look at that, it's just dead in the water. There's a bunch of zeros, a bunch of NAs. They're not on the charts yet. As soon as they do, you're gonna see numbers pop up. Volume green, red, it's gonna go live and you're gonna know instantly because you have this dead in the water list of these stocks. Now what I've done is covered the last two days. I've covered two days and I found the ones that have not gone on the market that moved from gray to pink or expert to pink or pink limited, whatever. My point, it's a short list that is hot that could ignite just that quick and it could be a bullet train for you from zero to 200 in just a couple minutes maybe even a few seconds these things rip it up folks they're some of the fastest moving stocks i have ever seen just food for thought and maybe money for the bank well, this one's pretty easy. I do want to talk about Natural Shrimp Incorporated, ticker SHMP. We have talked about this company a few times already, and I believe the last time we talked about it, it was about the reverse split. They said they were going to be doing a reverse split of 1 to 15 to 1 in 25. I think it was to get up to the NASDAQ. But what was peculiar was they had this strange clause in their filing that said something to the effect of, if you don't have any more than 100 shares of stock, your shares will not be affected by the reverse split that we'd be exempt now what that means is you're gonna go through the reverse split and get all the gains without any of the loss Tom would have had 2,500 shares yesterday I had a hundred the reverse split happens we both have a hundred the next day I got the same amount of shares he does difference is he didn't gain anything from that. He lost a lot of shares and didn't make any money. I didn't lose any shares and mine went up 25 times in value. Just that easy. But it didn't happen. So that has kind of gone by and as a matter of fact, they had news come out today which kind of touches on this whole scenario of uplisting. They had some great news come out today about a merger and though they don't come out and say it, it definitely looks like they are uplisting, and though they don't come out and say it, it does look like there is a dividend. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So the company finished today at about 16 and a half cents with just over 27% gains. On the middle tier of the QB, their financials are being audited. That means you can trust the figures you get. They've been looked at by a licensed CPA. That makes them more transparent. They've got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. Look for these ticks. Lots of important information being held inside these ticks. You can't see it because it's being validated behind the scenes. But if you're in a stock for a long hold, you want to see this information. If you're day trading, well, you're not there long enough for it to make a difference. But shrimp, I see shrimp as being a a good long hold this is an up-and-coming company in America that is growing shrimp in these big vats big aquariums clean healthy shrimp plump shrimp and they're not selling it frozen they're selling it fresh so they're distributing it from their place of, of business 
out only so far and they're building lots of these facilities around the country and even the news today says they want more they want more facilities so what was the relative volume around that news today not bad at all we jumped from 1.5 million up to almost 13 million share structure Nope, they didn't do no reverse split. No, they never said they did, never did. We have 663 million in the float, although it could be 618, could be 603. Honestly, I'm not real sure. I could have jumped into the disclosure to find out. Uh, they don't have disclosures. They're audited, they're gonna be 10Ks and 10Qs. And most of the time, these 10Ks and 10Qs don't tell you the float, not always, but the disclosures usually do, not always. So let's just say it's a little bit over 600 million. Financials, they're just getting going. I know they're just starting to make money. They did 33,000 at the end of last year. That is just starting. And quarterly, 17,000 first quarter and 36,000 a second quarter. Though it's kind of strange, I wonder if this has anything to do with the shrimp because there is no cost of revenue and you can't raise any kind of animal for free. There's always expenses. So this may be consultancy, but I know that they are actually doing something right now. So revenue should be coming anytime and they're getting a good price for their shrimp. Uh, disclosures. Well, we're probably going to see something over here just from the news. Uh, 8K, 915. No, they have not filed an 8K yet, but they do have the news. Very interesting. All right, let's go take a look at that news. This is the news we got today. Natural Shrimp Incorporated announces merger agreement with NASDAQ listed Yada Acquisition Corp. Now read this with me. It's important to read what they're not saying. Talk about reading between the lines. This is where this experience comes in handy. Natural Shrimp and Yoda Acquisition Corporation, a special purpose acquisition company, there just to merge with another company to get them on the NASDAQ, today announced the signing of a definitive agreement for a proposed merger of the two companies. Natural Shrimp will merge with a wholly owned subsidiary of Yada. The companies intend for Yada's common stock to continue to be listed on the NASDAQ. So Yada ain't moving. The companies are merging and Yada's staying put. So who do you think's moving? They haven't said so, right? Assuming no redemption by Yada public shareholders, upon closing, the combined entity could have access to as much as $105 million in net cash from Yada's trust account. We also expect that the merger will provide us with additional capital to advance facility expansion efforts in strategic markets in the U.S., including Florida, Nevada, and the Northeast. The transaction has the potential to put natural shrimp on the fast track to roll out across 10 largest population centers in the U.S. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Yada Acquisition Corporation will merge with and into Natural Shrimp, after which Natural Shrimp will be the surviving company and a wholly owned subsidiary of Yada Acquisition Corp. And Yada shall change its name to Natural Shrimp. Now, they haven't mentioned anything here about the ticker, but I do see Natural Shrimp, S-H-M-P, moving up to Yada's ticker this disappearing off the OTC because they've uplisted to the NASDAQ. Also, Yada Acquisition Corps will issue 17.5 million of its common shares to the security holders of Natural Shrimp. That's us folks. We're the ones that hold the security. So basically they're talking about a dividend here. Now when you compare 17.5 million to the 663 million in the float, that roughly comes out to about one free share, a dividend for every 60 shares you own. If that's the way they have it worked out, they could have something completely worked out just for the uh, preferred stock, the insiders, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, they're not saying it, I'm saying it, but you can read between the lines. The proposed business combination is expected to close in the first quarter of 2023. Natural Shrimp intends to use the proceeds from the proposed transaction to accelerate commercialization and production, ramp up of its farm to table sushi grade shrimp and fresh seafood. There you go, folks. You got a merger between two companies. One is a SPAC looking for a company to lift 
to the NASDAQ. They didn't say they were uplisting. Never once does it say they're uplisting in this entire thing, but that's what they're doing and they're leaving the OTC. So the stock is going to move up to, well, what is the price? Yada's on the market, folks. Let's just take a look at Yada. Yada acquisition, a SPAC goes for $10 a share, so I'm expecting it to be somewhere around $10 a share. $9.92. It is a shell company. Of course they're a shell company. That's what SPACs are. They are special purpose acquisition companies, blank check companies, looking for somebody, normally a private company, but it can be a public company, somebody who wants to move up to the NASDAQ. And let me tell you, this is a lot quicker easier and even cheaper than going through an IPO or an uplisting. So this is a great smart move for the company. Bravo for them. Now for those of you that bought 100 shares like I did, we're not going to get the biggest gains because we don't have a whole lot. So you may want to pick some up now. It may be a good idea. Pick some up now before they get on the NASDAQ. Get in front of all the big investors because this company is in America. We do have a food crisis, believe it or not. We do. And seafood has always been a problem. We have mercury. We have it coming from foreign nations. We can't be guaranteed. It's nice to just have fresh food right here in America. And this company is on the cusp of being the first shrimp distributor in America. Took a long time to get here. You're here at the right time. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is shrimp, six month, four hour chart. And we're doing our charting on my free trading platform. It's the only one I got. I got it when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. So can you. Keep your account open. You can use it anytime you like. So this is the six month, four hour chart for shrimp. We got a high bubble six months ago of 35 and a half cents and a low bubble about a month ago of seven cents. And right now we're at 16 and a half cents. And folks, I can see we have had a trend change. This is a whole new game here. I don't have to explain that that's a downhill trend. We hit the floor, hit the low bubble and have bounced up hard. And we are now on top of the 200, sticking up there. And today's news has launched it up. All the volume is coming into the picture and all the technicals are looking real strong with the exception of just a slight pullback on the RSI, but we're still up real high. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. There's her lurch to get on up. She did go sideways for about two weeks, but not real scary sideways because she never got close to the 200. And today was the first day she got close, though she didn't touch it. Volume came in, news came out, she was gone. She jumped from 12 cents to 19 cents and then fell back two and a half cents. So she has kept well more than 50% of her gains. Technicals still show a lot of heat, but they are showing signs of that price pullback right there. Five day, five minute. Well, that's a little interesting. Let's zoom in on that. I see that the news did not come out pre-market, so I'm presuming news like that normally has effect. As soon as the bell hits, it's taken off. Well, we got 10 minutes here where nothing happened. And then when something did start happening, it was quick and furious. It ran here from uh, a quarter to 10 to 10.15. She got her 30 minute run. That's what she got. And she pretty much kept most of it all day until she hit that 50. She tried to bounce off that 50 and lost her footing and fell underneath it. And right now it looks like she's going sideways again, consolidating. Technicals, they're a little weak. I see my PPO is coming close to my ADX. And when I see this blue line and red line coming together, the price is normally falling, but that's barely moving in those directions. And I do see my MACD is in recovery mode. So it looks like we have down pressure and up pressure, which would lock the price in going sideways. She may go sideways until this 200 comes up underneath her rather than fall to it. Just kind of hold her balance until it comes up and hopefully it'll push up. But the fact of the matter is we're not looking at this company for a run tomorrow. She may run tomorrow, but I'm looking at this for a long swing, a long hold. This is an established company in America selling grade A, healthy, clean, plump, 
tasty shrimp. And they got facilities already up. They want more facilities. And we can use all the fresh food that we can get in this country. And they're making good money selling at a nice price. So I'd keep my eye on shrimp. I'd actually consider getting in before they start running away. This merger deal is going to put them on the NASDAQ. They are uplisting even though they never said it. Right? Come on. And it looks like there's going to be a dividend. I don't know what it'll be, but they say they're giving shares to the security holders in natural shrimp. that be us. And well, the NASDAQ is all those investors, folks. This isn't the OTC up there. This is the big whales, institutions, hedge funds. Anybody up there sees what I see in this company, there could be a dump of money into this and really push this stock up. So yeah, I like shrimp. I think they're essential. Next stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker REVB Revelation Biosciences. Now this is a biotech and to be completely honest, I try to avoid sharing biotechs with you. Not because I don't like them, not because they can't make you money, but because I don't want to look stupid. Just reading the news presses is difficult enough for me. Trying to explain them to you, all that technical jargon, I'm just going to look yeah, so you can understand why I'm trying to avoid it. But if there's something big going on, I really do want to show you. And this company had big news come out today and all I have to do is share the headline with you and I'm really not cheating you of any information. So REVB had big news come out today. She ran up to just over 41 cents with almost 65% gains. Now, keep in mind with these major exchange stocks, they cannot be under a dollar. They have minimum bid price requirements. And if they're under a dollar for too long, they're in the danger zone. They'll get a warning from the NASDAQ. You've got six months to get your price up over a dollar. Stay there for 10 to 20 days consecutively or it's bye bye. You're going down to the OTC market. So REVB, they did have news come out today. What was the relative volume around it? huge. That's about 125 times her normal volume from 600,000 shares to over 71 million. Boom! Share structure. All right. I did go look up the float since they don't have any information here. I didn't do a deep dive, but I did look in quite a few different places and I could not find it. So the best I can tell you, it is going to be under 23 million, which is a pretty decent float financials. We've got anything going on over here. They list no financials here. However, when you look at the disclosures, we can see that they have financials here. They brought out a 10Q, that is a quarterly report in August. We're not going to jump into it, but I did. Uh, they have increased their assets in the last six months from 2 million to 4 million. So they've doubled their assets in the last six months. I couldn't find any revenues coming in, but I found them going out and they look to be running in a deficit of about 8 million in the last six months. So it appears to me this company is more of a R&D, research and development, they're spending a lot of money looking for those miracle cures. And since they're not making any money, they're going to have to get that money from their investors, the big ones or the little ones. Now they do have an 8K that came out today and basically it's just telling you to go look at a news press. Revelations Bioscience issued a press release announcing Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Let me get to the news. Thought I had it all set up there. Announcing positive results in preclinical model of acute and chronic kidney disease. So it's big news. It's promising news. Everybody likes this sort of thing. The problem is it's just the start of the journey down the yellow brick road. This is a preclinical trial to enter phase one. Phase one trials can last oh, a year, maybe two years. Then you advance to phase two trials, which can be three years long. And if you complete those successfully, you go to phase three trials, which can last anywhere from three to seven years. So as you can see, they are just starting a very long journey. Nonetheless, the stock was running today and they normally will. Even in that long span, anytime good news comes in, you will see a spike on the charts and then they'll normally go back to flatlining. So let's go take a look at the chart and see how she jumped today. 
So let's take a look at our EVB. That is a six month, four hour chart, but I think you deserve to see the one year, one day chart so you can see that high bubble. She was flat as a pancake before she hit it, $11.29. This is January of this year. I don't know what caused it, but that is a humongous drop. Put her all the way down here on the floor where she's been sitting all of this time. Let's come back to our six month, four hour chart. Now our high bubble is at $3.54 when she did break the 200. Had a couple more bounces in here, but again, she's going really flat. Though our technicals do show she's pushing up right now. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, so we had a pop back here, all pre-market, all through the day, gave it away. We've hit a low bubble and she's just been sitting right there underneath the 200, refusing to come up until the news came out. Looks like somebody must have known something because that is after market hours yesterday. So it was already starting to move. And then it continued slowly moving pre-market, had a big bounce and then a bigger bounce and then has given away about 50% of it. And it looks like it's still falling right now. Everything is cooling off on this. Let's look at our five day, five minute. All right, nothing going on but today. As I said, she did have some activity after market yesterday, continued it pre-market today, had a nice bounce just before the bell, had another bounce at the bell, actually fell back, almost tapped the 20 day before she hit her high very quickly of 50 cents. And right now we are at 41 cents. Let's grab our uh, Fibonacci. We could do it one way or the other, but I'm gonna sense that actually started right there. I'm gonna poke it where it started poke it where it ended and there you go these are basically supports and resistances that you can use without having to go back and find them based on other price points these are algorithmic and i want to see if the price stayed above the halfway point 50 percent she's hugging it that's the magnet effect right there folks i don't care if it's on the top or on the bottom as long as it's hugging the 50 percent i feel confident that it's probably not going to fall it's not a guarantee but since we're over 50 percent more than 50 percent in our favor that she's not going to fall the 200 is coming up to her real close right now could tap her and actually lift her up however the technicals show mixed feelings mixed feelings i see pressure again on both sides here looks like she's actually trying to recover right now i wouldn't expect much more out of it but when these biotechs come out with big news like that you do get bullet shoot ups just real quick and then they come back down and maybe a little bit higher than where they were but normally they come right back down to where they were until the next piece of news but you can always remember that because I'm not going to cover all these biotechs for you. So when you see a piece of biotech news where they had good news come out, a phase trial or something, just look at it, folks. Put it on your watch list. There's a very good chance you're going to bounce that day. Take your gains and say thank you. You're welcome. Last company we're taking a look at has just had a development as I was getting ready to talk to you about it. It is big, folks. This is ticker EULIF, European Lithium. This is an Australian mining company that mines, right, lithium. Now, we normally don't talk about mining companies for the same reason I don't talk about biotechs. Too much technical jargon in their news presses, so I just try to avoid them. Well, this company had big news come out today without any technical jargon, so I'm going to be able to pass it on to you pretty easily, especially since I had the help of Google. But this is where things got strange. When I saw this stock running today, I went out and did my research and only found one link out of everywhere I went, only one link for any information today about this company. And it went to an article in a foreign country. It was written in a foreign language, so I had no idea what it said. However, Google has a translator, so I used it. And it was like, whoa, that's juicy news. My viewers are going to love this. And the fact of the matter was, they actually stopped their stock from being traded yesterday. The company did. They put a halt on it so that they could release this news. And today, the market opened back up because they released it but they released it in a foreign country in a foreign language. So how many people in Europe got to read it or Australia or here in America? Well, just as I was setting this up, they just brought the news here to the OTC market. It's now in English. So they finished the day at about 15 cents. 
with almost 150% gains just on the foreign article. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, where you have to have your financials audited. This makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile, but I don't see a verified transfer agent. Hmm. They do. Uh, they are penny stock exempt. That's a bonus, folks. That is a bonus. What this basically means is that they have been in business for at least three to five years with a clean record, all their filings caught up, and they have had millions of dollars in assets during that period of time. So that removes that startup company risk. So they are a better investment just for that. So what sort of volume did this company have on their foreign article? Ooh, I'm telling you folks, this is under the radar. She only does 20,000 shares a day, which is just nil. Today she did 400,000, which is a huge jump, but that's still very, very low. We're not even hitting a half a million shares yet. She is still under the radar. Share structure is not so great. We got 1.3 billion shares in the float. So we got a lot of shares there. Company isn't making a whole lot of money right now. Uh, at the end of their fiscal year last year in June, they only had $23,000. We know it's thousands because we got to pull those three zeros down. Good news is it didn't cost them anything for that. Nothing at all. Quarterly, it is blank. There's absolutely nothing there. And yet they have millions of dollars in assets. I haven't jumped into a disclosure, so I don't know, but that's what they say. Actually, it wouldn't be a disclosure, would it? They're on the QB, so it would be a 10K or 10Q. And let's take a look at their disclosures. Uh, we have nothing fresh over here since April. So let's jump on over to that news. So there was the news of the halt yesterday. It just stopped and it didn't come back on until this morning. And then the news just happened right now, folks, as I was getting ready to talk to you. I originally had found this news, which I said was Google translated for me. This is what this news said. European Lithium plans to go public on the NASDAQ through a merger through a blank check company, Sizzle Acquisition. If the deal goes through, the Australian mining company would be renamed Critical Metals Core and could have a market value of around $1 billion, $972 million. According to its own statements, European Lithium wants to become one of the main producers of lithium in Europe. For this purpose, the cell phone Wolfsburg lithium project in Austria is to be further developed. A government constructed and approved mine 270 kilometers south of Vienna could produce about 10,500 tons of lithium concentrate annually by 2025. Because of the planned deal, the security was suspended from trading on Monday. Recently, however, the group had also made negative headlines. In May 2022, the Austrian Financial Market Authority sanctioned against European Lithium Limited for violating the ad hoc reporting obligation. A year earlier, the FMA had imposed sanctions against European Lithium for violating the prohibition on market manipulation. So just so you have the pros and cons. But let's take a look at the news that actually came out today. We're not going to go through all of it because it's pretty big. But I want you to see that there seems to be a difference. They were saying if this merger occurred in the news I found. This one says European Lithium Limited announces merger with NASDAQ listed CISO acquisition. Equity consideration of 750 million for Wolfsburg Lithium project. And there's a lot more information here. But there you go, folks. Looks like the deal was done from the time I found it. They were speculating on if it was going to happen. And this piece of news says it's going to happen. And guess what? This is in English. This is English, folks. Everybody in Australia, Europe, well, maybe not Europe, but America can read this. So I expect them to be a bigger bounce tomorrow. There was a 150% jump today off of a foreign article. What do you think is going to happen when the American one gets out there? Let's go see what that chart looks like. So we are looking at ticker EULIF. This is European Lithium six month, four hour chart. We got a low bubble here of about three cents and today, whoa, 
Today we had a high bubble just under 20 cents, 19 and a half cents. She hasn't had a whole lot of activity here. And when the 200 came into the picture, she's just been sitting underneath it all this time until today when she broke the ceiling and just ripped it out. Technicals are strong, folks. Everything is pushing up. Even our RSI doesn't even have a pullback. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Nothing going on until today. She ripped all day long. Most of the day she was climbing and she had a pullback at the back half of the day. All of our technicals are very, very strong right now. Everything looks really good. And I think with the English news coming out, it's gonna get better. So we had, well, you know, I'd like to call this a half a day of trade. This is yesterday, these three, five minutes. But this last one was at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's not like they stopped trading for very long. They didn't have a whole lot of trading going on. So they stopped it at three, put out their foreign article, and we had a run on a foreign article today. She's been riding on her 20-day SMA all the way up. It was her biggest SMA on the board until just now. Now the 50-day has come into the picture, and I would not be surprised to see the price come down to the 50. Now I think it's gonna continue running myself. I think the news coming out in English is gonna be all over Australia, all over America. Lots of people like to see stocks jump up to the NASDAQ, and they say it's gonna be worth $750 million, and that without any revenues, right? So this is something you gotta put on your watch list for tomorrow morning. Watch this, folks. I really get a feeling she's gonna to pop today 150% on just the foreign article. What is the English article gonna do? So there you go, we've got two stocks in the midst of mergers moving from the OTC up to the NASDAQ. And then you've got a biotech which probably isn't gonna move anymore, folks, but learn a lesson from that. Anytime good news comes out about a drug, regardless of where they are in their trials, you're gonna get a bounce out of it. But stocks moving up to the NASDAQ, we're getting ready for those bounces, folks. These are gonna move. Both these companies are gonna catch the attention of the big investors, and I expect to see some nice bounces out of them. Do some more DD. You know it can't hurt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.